it's a great pleasure to be here in uh, Bhuneshwar, the city of temples, and also be uh, part of this uh, national seminar on GST, organized by the Institute of Cost Economics of India. I wish to thank uh, my guru, Mr. Uh, Raju Ayer, who has been in, with me in the student days, and also thank V.S. Date, sir. Without your guidance, uh, most of the students today would not even understand the nuances of the entire taxes or would have not scaled up in the examination. I also thank the SP party and Narendra Mishnarji, who is the taxation committee chairman, who has been involved in this crucial year in reforming the GST. All right. In fact, we had our uh, minister, union minister for finance, Arun Jaitley. I am part of this uh, CI, Confederation of Indian Industry, a couple of weeks before. And the crucial junction of the uh, budget, he made his time to come to Chennai. And he was throwing some lights on a few statistics. I was astonished and wanted to bring this to you and then take to the technical aspects. He said that uh, out of the total SSC, only hardly 4 lakh SSCs account for about 93% of the revenue. 4 lakh SSCs account for 93% of the revenue of the Indian government. And rest of the revenue come from the major portion of the SSC and it clearly shows that India has to increase the revenue or rather the tax base. And while he was expressing, he also said that there will not be major announcement in the budget. But one thing is clear from the World Economic Forum meeting when Honorable uh, Union Minister, Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan was speaking, there is an urgent necessity today to bring the petrol under the GST. Because petrol is one of the major component. If you look at the total revenue of the Indian government, nearly 55% of the uh, revenue comes from the petrol and uh, nearly 45% of the revenue comes from the petrol and for the state government, nearly 55% of the revenue comes from the petrol. Still, GST, we are in the uh, pathway of, uh, we are only swimming, we have not completely implemented and there are a lot of issues to be addressed and when I saw only 4 lakh cases are contributing only 93% of the revenue, then I was looking at the professional opportunity for the members. And when I was looking at the professional opportunity, the professional opportunity is going to be on the advisory side. When I talk about the advisory, the advisory on valuation is a key for the cost accountants because we are the masters of the costing and valuation mechanism is one of the important things that we need to take up. As I was just looking at this book written by V.S. Dateji, I wanted to highlight the, my own presentation from this book because you all will be getting this book is what I understand. And how do you use this book? So I just wanted to highlight from this book itself. Do not get into valuation too much because the issue that is for the particular person behind, beside you will not be the issue for you. It is unique. And what we feel when we conduct a GST seminar, we want to understand every issue that is going on in the industry. I'm telling you it is impossible because the industry cluster, we have about 2,000 plus uh, uh, 151 districts and in, we have so many 2,000 plus industry clusters and it's different. So that we will generally highlight about the issue and this book is very uh, easy to understand those issues. If you go back to the valuation, under the GST, the valuation is based on the transaction value. It's as simple as that. Whatever you charge as part of your invoice on which you, you can charge GST. But there are certain issues and the reference of this section is uh, section 15, subsection 1 of the CGST Act and SGST Act. It says that the value of the goods, value of a supply of goods or services or both shall be transaction value. That is the price actually paid or payable for the set supply of goods or services or both where the supplier and recipient of the supply are not related and the price is the sole consideration for the supply. The supply requires a higher level of maturity and then we will go into the transaction value. In fact, I was just discussing, uh, taking a session with uh, the commercial tax officers in my state of Tamil Nadu in Madurai. While I was just discussing, the officers have still not come from the mindset of dealer. Actually, we have moved on to the uh, area of supply and supply is a wider definition. Supply is a comprehensive definition. It includes sale, it includes service, it includes leasing, it includes uh, all, all the gamut for a consideration and for the furtherance of business. So even free supply is included except your samples, except your samples which is specifically stated in the act. But free supply in furtherance of business is also included as part of your supply. That's a kind of a level of inclusiveness that the supply has been brought. And uh, the condition for accepting transaction value are, there are two important conditions. 
one supplier and recipient should not be related and it is not that the transaction is not supplied but accepting the sale consideration accepting the consideration the basic fundamentalist fundamentalist they should not be related if they are related there are certain special brahmastras or rather we need to use certain special provision to evaluate that consideration or we need to go and check the valuation and price is the sole consideration and when they talk about the price this comes from the uh, squarely because we have been habituated to do that in the service tax and other regulation as well and if you look at valuation clearly says the basic uh, valuation clearly says value does not include gst but includes other taxes i want to draw your attention here the government is actually moving towards uh, removing the cascading effect and uh, the whether the revenue uh, the whether the any other taxes whatever the taxes that is charged as part of the transaction value government is only going to get it in fact i still remember uh, correct me if i'm wrong in 1982 we had a debate whether excise duty can be charged uh, on the excise duty whether we can charge the local vat and i'm sure it is a mcdonald's case i wish uh, dati ji to highlight some uh, points on it and in the mcdonald's case i am sure it was uh, brought to the notice of the government and we have been debating about the cascading effect to be we are talking about one nation one market one tax but still the cascading effect has not gone out of the gst one place where the cascading effect is there is part of your transaction value where you talk about uh, the other taxes being included on which you charge gst and two section 17 sub section 5 because as a practitioner as a consultant i never understood i should not question logic about the law because that's how the government taught me that's how the my professional courses taught me but i'm still surprised to know as per section 17 sub section 5 the cascading effect is still there because there is a denial of input tax credit the question is when the government is looking at taking up one nation one market one tax then where is the question of denial of input tax credit a simple thing which i was always thinking about is if you buy a motor vehicle whichever has four wheels that is what i understand whichever has a four wheels you, uh, you buy and if you are not in the business of transportation of vehicle or uh, you are not in the business of transportation then that input tax credit is denied and for example if you go and eat in a hotel if you go and eat in a hotel and uh, whatever the bill you get let's assume your employees go and eat in a hotel and whatever you incur that 5% or whatever earlier it was 12% 18% 28% and still the five star hotels that portion of tax what you pay is denied as per section 17 sub section 5 this is squarely a cascading effect this requires a representation i have been arguing with the ministry and i have even questioned the the state finance minister who is from our tamil nadu i asked him why is the section 17 sub section 5 still prevalent i am still not uh, got justification because i don't know what research has gone inside when they brought the section 17 sub section 5 because we are looking at completely taking out cascading effect why am i highlighting about this because under the valuation the value does not include gst but includes other taxes amount paid by recipient on behalf of supplier i also wanted to bring to your notice that any amount that the supplier is liable to pay in relation to such supply but which has been incurred by the recipient of the supply and not included in the price actually paid or payable for the goods or services or both is includable in the value and it has been stated under section 715 subsection 2 clause b and of course this cannot cover free inputs or services supplied by recipient as only amount paid by recipient on behalf of supplier is includable this would be so only where there was a contractual liability on supplier to make those supplies now for example there is always a debate whether the free samples that samples will definitely be covered the samples will be definitely be covered under the valuation samples which are not free samples which are free sample will be covered only when it is part of the contractual liability all free samples are not covered so it is whichever is given beyond the contractual liability it is not covered because there is no consideration paid for that that's what it argues this requires a complete uh, guidance from the government again and incidental expenses incurred before supply there are so many cases where we incur in incidental expenses now the question is what is incidental expenses like the incidental expenses can be commission packaging charges by the supplier to recipient of the supply including any amount charged for anything done by the supplier in respect of the supply of goods or services or both 
at that time or before delivery of the goods or as the case may be the supply of the services are includable in value. So anything that you incurred in the nature of commission, packaging and charged by the supplier to the recipient of a supply before the delivery or at the time of the delivery will be included as part of your uh, valuation and uh, like some more expenses like uh, payment, loading in factory, inspection, testing before supply will also be included in value and design charges is also incurred before the supply will also be included in value. So the lesson that we need to learn from this section 15 subsection 2 clause C that any expenses you may incur before you load or before at the time of delivery or at the time of delivery time of supply all the expenses are incurred as part of the value the transaction value of supply on which you will charge GST. So uh, interest uh, late fee and penalty for delayed payment it is very clear that the interest late fee or penalty for delayed payment of any consideration for any supply is included in value and this is what will be included will be those delayed uh, me, delayed means it has been provided delayed me obviously means delay beyond agreed terms and this interpretation can also be justified because the word interest has been used in, uh, in the words late fee or penalty so the late fee and penalty will be included and that penalty will be included as part of your valuation and not the normal course of interest so these are the some of the highlights it's very tough to it's not a TED talk to actually complete in 10 minutes but I try to highlight some more point and I'm sure the government is actually contemplating to bring the before I just leave I want to give this highlight government is contemplating to bring the GST for petroleum products and it's been very clear that the government is any in shortly they will bring it they will notify it the next question is when will the alcohol come under the GST alcohol whether it comes under the GST first constitution has to be amended to bring the alcohol and the main reason for not alcohol coming under the GST is my own state of Tamil Nadu and the in there where the alcohol is sold and then education is funded because the major revenue comes from alcohol so all said and done alcohol also will come because today to amend the constitution Lok Sabha we have majority Rai Sabha we have majority and the present central government is there in major, majority of the state and looking at this uh, uh, vision of the government and considering the chief minister uh, became prime minister from Gujarat and where Gujarat does not have alcohol definitely alcohol will be brought under the GST any time but the rest, reason why I am highlighting about it uh, taking time because petroleum products when it comes under GST I am sure tomorrow we are releasing the anti profit ring guidelines it is a very crucial when I went to Malaysia and did a survey I came to understand anti profit ring should not be brought post GST anti profit ring should be brought before GST and when Malaysia got it, Malaysia decided to bring GST in 2013 and they brought in 2015 they freeze the prices before 18 months the average pricing was there and that is the reason inflation was not affected but in India we are talking about anti profit ring after bringing GST which is only an academical exercise and you can't even go and impose on the companies because India is a free market economy and not like China and looking at this anti profit ring could be relevant now when the government is contemplating to bring the petroleum products under the GST because cost of logistics and petrol is a major cost for any business and looking at this we have to give the steps to the government to tell them how to bring the petrol under the GST because now you can freeze the margin and when the petrol prices are going to reduce the reduced price has to be provided to the consumer as a benefit and not show the hands of the GST and say because of GST the price have increased again the business people should not pocket and third important thing which I want to highlight before I leave if you look at the recent report that the HLL has brought Hindustan Unilever they are not able to pass on 119 crore benefit which they got because of the revision of the prices to the consumer because the products are in the pipeline they are saying the government please take this money which is because of the consumer government is afraid to touch that 119 crore, 119 crore because then the people will blame at the cost of us government gain so considering all these issues we need to as an institute of cost accountants of India we should uh, provide best guidance on the anti profit ring the forthcoming days and I'm forthcoming months and it's very crucial for India and GST is not settled and it will not settle for the next two and a half to three years and it will not settle there are humpty number of opportunity the question is whether the revenue for the professional has increased it has not increased 
as a professional fees. In China, each professional's revenue increased by 600%. In India, I don't see that as increased, but you should know how to corner your practice also as part of your GST advisory. Thank you for this and I'll take the questions on the panel.